Hey, Jack. Good morning. Hey, morning. How are, you, how are you doing today? Fantastic. It is a gorgeous day down here in uh, Central California. All right. Sunny, sunny. It's also sunny here in Northern California. So, nice. Well, <laughs> yeah. Nice change of pace. <laughs> yeah, it is. But we miss you over here. So, you, should, you know, you I know. I miss you guys too. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's jump into it. So, uh, this is Somalia this week uh, uh, with Jack. And um, we are, uh, our, this is our April uh, 23rd week. Uh, so, Jack, it's been a big week this week. Uh, where are we at with the Somalia protocol and the Somalia app? What's the, what's top of mind? Well, you know, one of the top of mind for me, and, and I think most exciting for most of our users, is I, I got a sneak peek at the V3 demo, which working. Okay. Um, and, Just to confirm, uh, this is Somalia's app on Uniswap V3, right? Yes, it is. Yes. All right. That we will good, be good, launching good. Um, in, in a week or two here. Uh, I, I think that the, the 12th is our launch date. The 12th is our launch date. Yes, that's yep. going to be Sommelier Uniswap V3 week, where we have one week of nonstop events on Sommelier and Uniswap V3. It's going to be extremely exciting. Um, anyway, yep. got a first look at that um, app, and uh, it, it's great. I'm very excited about that. So I, I think that's kind of top of mind for me this week. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, excellent. And, and so let's talk about, um, and then the protocol. So, so protocol yeah. is not top of mind this week, huh? Hmm. Oh, well, you know, just the most exciting thing that happened in Sommelier this week is it, it's it, next week, we're going to be launching the beta of it. So, you know, I'm, yes. that's, that's first thing on my mind. But as okay. far as on the protocol side, I think we made some great progress this week. Um, Steven from Volume Fi team um, has been spiking on the seller contract, which is wow. basically the okay. refungibility of Uniswap V3 liquidity into okay. a pool share. Oh, okay. um, and slow, 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 slow. Yes. Slow. That's a lot. That's a lot. So tell us, what does that mean exactly when you say the refungibility of the token into a pool share? What, what does that yeah. mean exactly? Yeah. So fungibility is the property of a thing, which means that any one piece of it is equivalent to another piece of it. Um, and in Uniswap V2, when you deposit liquidity into the Uniswap pool, the pool, sh the share of that pool that you get back is fungible. Any one mm -hmm. share of that pool is equivalent to another share of that pool. However, with Uniswap V3, because you have to specify where you're deploying your liquidity within the pool, that has made liquidity within Uniswap V3 pools non-fungible. Um, and that's because each liquidity share has to have additional data to it. Correct. So uh, the contract that Steven is working on um, has a lot of these non-fungible positions and makes a fungible share out of that. Um, does that make sense? Well, let's talk about that last section. You said it makes yes. a fungible share out of that. What does that mean exactly to make a fungible share out of a non-fungible? Yeah, so it, it, the, the pool calculates the total value of all of the liquidity within the non-fungible shares mm -hmm. and then says that's a whole and yep. i'm going to sell pieces of that got it okay so what does it mean when you say it sells pieces of that whole what does that mean exactly <laughs> they are fungible pool shares just the same way that they are in Uniswap correct VG. but let's walk yeah. through mechanics like so our audience wants to know what's this magic that's going on you say so i have some non-fungible tokens in my uniswap v3 uh pool right that i have mm -hmm. and now how do you make it fungible? Do yeah, that's you, a great question. You, you wrap it in some in your, in your ERC20 specification. Yes. I mean, that's that's basically what it is. The, the okay. contract that manages all of the liquidity yes. um, is an ERC20 token. It has Perfect. a supply. In addition yeah. to the other stuff, it does. Um, and when some and one of the things that it does is it has an allocation in the contract and the allocation right. says that whenever you're adding new liquidity we're going to yep. put it in this range Got and it. um this is what is going to be driven by the sommelier chain so the last couple of weeks we've talked a lot about the allocation module and sort of yep. how that works yep. and this is the on-chain piece of that on the ethereum side so this is maybe the first time we're hearing a project converting the uniswap v3 non-fungible liquidity tokens into ERC20 fungible liquidity tokens. Is this what you're saying? 
Yeah, I think it is. I think we are the first folks to do that. Whoa! <laughs> I think that's bigger news than than your app, dude. I think that's hot. Yeah, okay, I think so it wait, is. But, but, I mean, but, that's pretty. Oh, wait, cool. hold on. Now let's let's talk about how does this relate back to the app. So let's talk about the, how this works with the app magic in your mind. Like, what's your vision for this, and how this would work? Yeah, you know, so this is just another offering of the application. So right now on Samoye, you can go and see the highest yielding pools. Yep. You know, these these sort of low cap gyms with these huge trading volumes where you're able to really make money on your liquidity provision. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what we allow you to do is show up with just Ethereum or just USDT or just one side of the pool and just yep. ape in easily. Yes. And yes. that user experience is what we want to preserve for V3. That's you amazing. Know, so wait, you and I could be lazy and yeah, still make money. Absolutely. Like like you know, this. it's it, as these decentralized exchanges add features to really cater to really high powered traders and really serious sources of liquidity, you yes. need to add a lot of knobs and levers and the experience gets complicated. And mm -hmm. Uniswap V3 is really kind of the first time we're seeing that out in the wild because up until now, DEXs really haven't been a thing up until about the last year. And mm -hmm. now, now we're seeing more and more complexity added. And what needs to happen is that complexity needs to get wrapped so that average right. users and retail traders can use that. And that's mm -hmm. you know always been the vision of Sommelier, democratizing access to this liquidity provision, making right. it easy, making it understandable, as well as making it profitable for our users. That's excellent. Uh, so it's so exciting that you have the seller work going on. I'm presuming this is going to be working on ETH contracts. So the seller is for, well, you said it, ERC-20 non-fungible. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, what other things you're working on? I think you have something happening on the go side, on the protocol side. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and in, in, in the more boring side of what we're working on, the bridge, which is kind of the <laughs> core of what we're doing, it is right. the infrastructure that underlies this connection between Cosmos and Ethereum. Um, yeah. We're still continuing this refactor that we've been working on for a little while. Yeah, we hit yeah, a huge yeah. milestone this week. And congratulations, um, awesome. which is big. And, uh, you know, Tell us a lot of my time this week has gone into. Uh, Tell us about the milestone. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think if you've ever done a large refactor of an existing code base, every one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in pain. I feel the pain already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone is kind of different. Everyone is unique. Um, and each language kind of has a different way to do this. But in Go, um, I feel like once you get to a point where you've torn the code into a ton of pieces, and then you've renamed everything, and you've got yeah. the new structures that you need, and then yeah. you can get the code to compile, maybe it yeah. doesn't work. And like, it definitely doesn't work. Um, <laughs> but it does compile. And, and you know, right. that is a huge milestone. And at that point, you have a known <laughs> working state <laughs> that you can then work against and it's much right. easier to parallelize work which makes things go a lot faster so this okay. next stage of the refactor we're able to throw more engineers on the refactor at this point to bring it home and yeah. you know collaborating with the althea team to make sure that the changes that we've made work with the existing test suite and you know it, it's uh so anyway the the refactor has gone from a smaller percentage of my time to a much larger percentage of my time this week and over the next couple of weeks i, I think it's going to take quite a bit of my time okay, so congrats to your team for reaching the compile uh, milestone on the refactoring this week and uh congratulations i i think in our updates we were talking about the attestation module and the allocation module um yeah. these can, are these the two big pieces that uh, are remaining on your on your list for for the next big milestones for the protocol Oh, the uh, the attestation module is actually a piece of the gravity bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, the gravity bridge and the allocation module are the two major pieces the of on-chain infrastructure. Pieces. Gravity bridge. Okay, bridge yeah. Um, Go ahead, Jack. So where were we? We were talking about the gravity module and the allocation module. These are the two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the on-chain side of what we're building. For uh, for the for sommelier, really, you know, yes, this, yes. this increasing the ability of people on Uniswap v3, especially to provide liquidity and not have to really worry about it, and that's going to be increasingly critical with v3. Um, and I think that you know we were talking earlier about this sort of like cyclical trend of DEXs um, 
increasing in complexity. And as yeah. that happens, and as more volume moves to those DEXs, and it will because Uniswap v3 is vastly more capital efficient um, and much lower slippage for yeah. 90. 5% plus of trades out there. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I have a feeling it will, there will be more and more opportunities for us as sommelier to offer more of these products across a, a bunch of different exchanges. Excellent. Excellent. That is, that is amazing. And you're recruiting, right? You're growing your team. I think you've been aggressive yeah. recruiting. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. For talent. You know, we, we've, we've hired, uh, you know, in, in addition to the folks from the Cosmos ecosystem that we've been working with for years, we've hired two additional Go engineers at this point. Um, mm -hmm. We're really actively looking for some more folks. We've got a ton of work on the Cosmos SDK that needs to be done that we're contracting with the ICF to do. And most of this stuff is stuff that we need for our roadmap. And we're working with the ICF to ensure that it gets upstreamed. Um, so if, you, if then, you've gotten to the video at this point, that means you must like boring protocol discussions. That means you must <laughs> yeah. understand Go. So you must reach out to Jack and say, please join yes. me. I want to join your team. <laughs> yes. And if you're one of those Go engineers who's been writing Go for years, complaining about the lack of generics and talking okay. to anyone who will listen about the need for a proper inheritance system, um, we are also hiring Rust engineers as well. Um, and ah. please reach out to us. <laughs> There you go. I think so. Our jobs are available on uh, sommelier.finance slash jobs. Uh, if you go to sommelier.finance slash jobs, you can see the opportunities there. We're adding them every day. And if you don't see something, just send us a note to info at sommelier.finance and say, hey, I want to work for you guys and we'll take a look at your background. Right. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I think All that's right. a good plug trait. So we talked about protocol, we talked about the app, uh, we talked about Let's let's talk about I, I think some news Uniswap v3 subgraph that uh, Similia created is now merged. Uh, oh, that's or, great news! That's huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the Uniswap team was super kind to take our work and use it as a baseline for building their subgraph with some changes. Right. That's huge. Yeah, that's 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 great. You know, love being able to help the Uniswap team out uh, prior to a launch. I know that uh, from from personal experience. When you're jamming to a big deadline, it's all hands on deck, and you know any any help from the community is really appreciated and awesome. Um, you know, I, I just I remember when we were launching the hub, all the validators started publishing guides on how to set up a validator, yeah. and it's something yeah. that we did not do at Cosmos and Tinderbit for a variety of reasons. It was really great to have those to share with people, and, and you know, yeah. it's just it's it's nice when. The community comes comes together behind something, and it's more than just support on social media. It's actually yep. code and engineering, um, and that's, that's, great. that's, that's really great. fun to be able to provide that as well. That's great, and I'm sure the validators listening would love to know uh, when next testnet. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, Tariq would really love to know too. Um, <laughs> and, and the answer is once we once we have some stability on the gravity side of things, then we'll be able to do a testnet. You know. Um, we are, my just kind of general strategy is there's this uh, idea in machine learning called the mini armed bandit. And it's that you spin up a bunch of worker threads and try pulling a lot of different levers. That's and right. you know some of the le levers are gonna be right and you're gonna hit the jackpot sometimes. And those are the, the efforts that you kind of put your focus behind. And here at Sommelier, we run engineering that way. <laughs> So uh, we have, you know, the front end team, which is working really hard to ship contracts for Uniswap v3. We're going to use a lot of those contracts for Uniswap v3 to put liquidity into things. And the users that are coming to Sommelier right now to learn how to find the coolest pools and to provide liquidity to these different projects, those are going to be the same users that we use that, that end up using the, the protocol product as well. Right. Right. Um, and, even on the protocol side, you know, we're talking about all these different work streams. Each of these is kind of working independently and, and we're kind of pushing them all together. And then at a certain point, we're just gonna weave the work together and then that's the product. Um, you know, the, the allocation module side of things, we've kind of pushed that about as far as we can. Yeah. You know, we've got the, the core structure down, we've defined the data structures, uh, we understand how the state machine logic works, like that's good to go for the most part. There's gonna be some minor changes and additional testing required. The gravity yeah. bridge we've talked about fairly extensively. And then, you know, we've got the seller contracts and, you know, yeah. that's currently kind of in an exploratory phase as well. There's yeah. a number of kind of branches in the road in implementation on the seller contracts. And, you know, we hit one this morning and I think we were talking about 
uh, and a lot of these decisions come down to stuff like who's paying for the fees. Is it the protocol? Correct. Is it the users? The user. That's right. How much? Uh, yeah. You know, if you're doing things in a kind of batch format or more in an, uh, each individual transaction format, and there's a lot of like places along the way where these decisions need to get made. So you know, we're just kind of tracking as many things as we can. And, you know, when we get roadblocked on one, you can immediately move over to something else. And that's kind of how you build a scalable software organization and end up shipping these products um, because you just kind of have to keep pushing away on a number of different things. And yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. And, and congrats to you and the team for another week of hard pushing. Um, I guess that's it for us uh, until next week. Uh, continued success, best wishes on the refactor, and look forward to seeing the Simile app come from alpha into production. Oh yeah, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. We're gonna talk about some dancing bananas next week. Uh, maybe we might talk about some dancing bananas. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, when do I get to interview you about dancing bananas? <laughs> no, I know, right? I would love to talk about the dancing bananas. Uh, we, 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 we had some work on that this week and, um, uh, we've hired a new designer. So we'll see if, uh, Ooh. we get some magical looks on, on these, uh, on these little bananas and, and the prices. Oh, cool. Well, need. that's exciting yeah. to rake. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. Congratulations. Right. Thank you so much. And more to share as we go. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.